So it's a respiratory virus similar to RSV, very similar to RSV. It just causes a little bit different symptoms and infects at different ages and a little different time of year compared to RSV. Well, we're seeing a big surge of cases with HMPV right now. And I think that's not surprising. We've seen that post COVID pandemic with many other respiratory viruses as people go out and about with their usual activities, more contact with other people, less masking. So all these respiratory viruses are being transmitted more commonly. So it's very similar to RSV. So you get fever, cough, cold, runny nose. Um, sometimes this usually lasts a few days. Um, it generally affects um, uh, all children by the age of five, so they all get it. Usually at a little bit older ages compared to RSV, so the peak age of hospitalization, for example, with RSV is about two to three months, but with HMPV, it's six to 12 months. And it usually occurs a little later in the season, so RSV is usually early fall through um, uh, mid-winter or so, and um, HMPV is usually more late fall to um, late winter. Mostly it's young children who are most at risk for having lower respiratory infections such as pneumonia or bronchiolitis, but anybody with underlying heart or lung disease or if they've got weakened immune systems, um, it can cause more severe respiratory um, infection. If your child has a cough and runny nose and they're handling it well, if they're not having difficulty breathing, then no reason to go to the hospital. But if a child is a very young child, less than two months of age and with a fever, then you should call your health care provider. Um, if there's any difficulty breathing, any breathing rapidly or you see the ribs sticking out or any sort of blueness around the, the lips, those are signs that um, a child might need a little extra help with their breathing. If you're around somebody who's coughing or sneezing, then those droplets can cause infection. Um, so that's why respiratory etiquette and cough hygiene is so important. Um, and then the other way that you can get that is by touching things that, um, that infectious secretions have contaminated. So if people touch an infected surface that somebody has coughed on, and then you touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth, then it can be transmitted that way. You know, there's no specific um, treatment that's generally recommended. For the youngest children, using a bulb syringe to clear the congestion can be useful. Sometimes a humidifier or vaporizer may be useful, especially if they have something like croup as a complication of infection, and trying to make sure that they don't get dehydrated and get enough fluids. If um, somebody is hospitalized for this infection, generally it's supportive care that's given. So oxygen if they need it, if they're getting dehydrated, um, some intravenous fluids, um, those sorts of things are given. And we do have a test for it as part of a respiratory viral panel or respiratory pathogen panel, which tests for multiple different respiratory viruses. In general, we don't recommend that for outpatients because there's no specific treatment, so it really doesn't matter that you know that that's what it is. For patients who are admitted to the hospital or patients who are at more at risk for um, severe infection, then it is useful to know what we're dealing with. Um, and it's also important to know that it's not other things like influenza or COVID, for example, which may have more specific therapies. So really testing is generally reserved for, for those who are admitted to the hospital.